Explanation of the Evidence at the Pentagon on 9-11, created by Wayne Costey, narrated by David Chandler. Here's the table of contents, and here's the table of contents for chapters 9 to 17. Chapter 15, Ground Effect and Yaw Rotation. In this section, we're going to be observing some wingtip vortices. Wingtip vortices extend behind an airborne aircraft. The wings deflect air downward. This downward moving air moves both downward and outward, causing rolling masses of air called wingtip vortices, seen here as cones. It takes energy to create these vortices. Ultimately, the energy derives from the engines of the plane. This reduces the engine's thrust. You can see these vortices sometimes as planes fly through clouds. Here's one example. Here a crop duster passes through colorful smoke, and you can see the vortices as the plane passes close to the ground. Here's a test, flying through smoke to display the vortex. Interestingly, if there had been a flyover of the Pentagon, the fireball would have shown evidence of the rotating air currents, but none was observed. Ground effect. Some assert that a plane could not get low enough to hit the first floor due to ground effect. Note, ground effect doesn't prevent planes from approaching the ground. Typically, ground effect increases the airspeed. Energy expended to create wingtip vortices is reduced. More power from engine thrust is then available to accelerate the plane, thus increasing speed and lift, and the effect of wingtip vortices is reduced at higher speeds. Also, compressing wingtip vortices increases effective wing surface, thus increasing lift. Here we see wingtip vortices created on the left-hand side more than half a wingspan above the ground. On the right, less than half a wingspan above the ground, the vortices are compressed, taking less energy to create them and increasing effective wing surface area. When you get close to the ground, this increased turbulence would kick up any loose material, like dust or grass clippings, which might account for what Penny Eglis saw. Ground effect begins about a half wingspan above the ground. The plane approaching the Pentagon was more than half wingspan above the ground for much of its approach until the last two and a half seconds or 2,000 feet. Any ground effect can be compensated for by adjusting the control surfaces and a slight nose-down attitude. Since the plane was descending, it is likely the ground effect was largely canceled by this nose-down orientation. However, this does raise the issue of whether a novice pilot could make the necessary maneuvers. Other experienced pilots say they had to make repeated attempts in simulators to get it right. Here is the topography of the approach to the Pentagon. The plane was more than a half wingspan above the ground until the last 2,000 feet, and seriously below that only for about the last 1,200 feet. Boeing 720 crash test. This crash test was done with a four-engine jet at Edwards Air Force Base in California. It was remotely controlled and crashed into a barren patch of desert on December 1, 1984. It was a controlled impact demonstration designed to underscore results of exhaustive research in specific areas of aircraft safety, improve crash protection, and reduce post-crash fire hazards. The specific objectives were to obtain data on impact forces, transmission of forces through the structure to the seats and occupants, evaluate energy-absorbing seats, compare predicted structural behavior with an actual crash, and to test a particular kind of fuel. This crash test has some key points of relevance for discussion of 9-11. First, the plane approached the ground at a shallow angle. Ground effect did not prevent the plane from approaching the ground. Wing flaps were down, which increased ground effect. Slower speed increases ground effect. But the plane descended smoothly below a half wing length and slid on the underside of the plane upon hitting the ground. Significant yaw rotation began immediately when the left wing touched the ground. This is relevant to our earlier discussion of yaw rotation when the right engine hit the generator trailer at the Pentagon on 9-11. In this case, we will see the effect of a less pronounced effect of the wing touching the ground. 
So here is a picture of a shallow angle approach above a flat surface. The plane is about a half wingspan above the flat surface now. Here the plane is less than half a wingspan above the surface and it's not getting popped up. Here the left wing is closer to the ground than the right wing. Some have suggested the ground effect increases exponentially as you approach the ground. That should prevent one wing from dropping lower than the other. A tilted plane should self-correct to remain level close to the ground. But that's not happening. One wing continues to get lower and now what you see is one of the engines starting to drag on the ground. It doesn't hit anything solid like the diesel generator trailer, but there's a drag due to friction. In the last couple of frames, we can see the plane significantly rotating due to this torque. Yaw rotation. Let's look at that yaw rotation a little more carefully. Here we are putting a mark on the tail in each frame. Here's frame one. Here's frame two. Here's frame three. You can see it is moving down and to the left. Frame 4, frame 5, frame 6. Here is the trail of tail markers which shows the rotation due to wing impact. In frames 1, 2, and 3, the plane is not significantly rotating. The time from markers 4 to 6 is 0 0.38 seconds, during which time the plane rotated significantly. The amount of rotation here is simply induced by the engine sliding on the ground and the engine on the opposite side was not at full power. In the case of the Pentagon plane, the engine struck an essentially immovable object, taking a chunk out of it, and the opposite engine was at full power. This would tend to compensate for the fact that the Pentagon plane traveled only 120 feet after generator trailer impact, allowing for 0 0.15 seconds of rotation. It's hard to be too quantitative here, but it shows that when there is an off-center impact, Yaw rotation is a significant effect, and it would affect the plane at the Pentagon and the way it collided with the Pentagon wall. In Chapter 16, we will look at the case of Porter Goss and the sonic boom.